Hey everybody, I'm Paintball Dad. Thanks for tuning into my channel. Today I'm going to tell you all about my experience at the very first event for the C3XL. That's the Carolinas Three Man X Ball League. We're going to go over the good, the bad, and the weird. So let's start with the good. The C3XL is the newest paintball league in the Carolina area, and it's three man format with X Ball rules, which I think is great. The three man format is a lot cheaper than the five man format, and it's a lot easier to get new or beginner paintball teams into the paintball scene with a three man format. I also really like the venue. I'm a big fan of Palmetto Hills Paintball. It's one of the closer fields to me. It's in Rock Hill, South Carolina. They obviously have a speedball field and lots of woods ball fields. And it's one of the few paintball fields in the area that has a store. That's gonna sound kind of crazy to a lot of you guys because until I moved down to South Carolina, I've never actually seen a paintball field without a store. But down here in South Carolina, there's only about two paintball fields that have an actual store in them. I also like the staff and the general vibe of the place whenever I go there. I always feel like it's very welcoming and I usually make a friend or two while I'm playing there. Side note, this time I actually ran into Matt the Gym Rat, who I was very surprised to find out actually follows my channel. Cause he's like one of the biggest paintball personalities on social media right now. Oh, and another cool thing about the C3XL is that they contracted with Blue Insights Media. Now, if you're not from the Carolina area, you probably never heard of him, but he does really good paintball photography and videos. And from what I can tell on the C3XL website, it looks like they've already prepaid him to be at every event to do pictures for generally all the teams. So, so that's pretty cool. And the event had a good turnout. There was 20 teams in D5 and then about six or eight teams, I think, in Division 6. But now let's move on to the bad. So speaking of divisions, this league only has Division 5 and Division 6 as far as their ranked divisions. And that in itself is kind of disappointing for a number of reasons. When the league was first introduced, I actually thought they were going to have higher divisions. I feel like there was something that was mentioned along those lines back in the planning stages. And if you look on their website, they do say that their goal is to make 3-man available and appealing to higher division players. So I'm not sure what they mean by higher division, because Division 5 and Division 6 is not what I would consider higher division. I mean, I'm Division 4 myself, and I don't even consider Division 4 to be a higher division. I think of like Division 3 and up to be like the really higher divisions. And then number two, the South Carolina area has a lot of paintball players, but not a lot of paintball leagues. So I feel like this league really missed out on a golden opportunity to offer higher division tournaments. And technically they do have a couple of open rank events on their calendar, but they're not gonna be ranked on the PB League's system. Meaning that if you play these events, it won't add anything to your player rank on the international scoring system. The next thing on my bad list is that this event lasted really long into the day. I think all of the preliminary matches ended at around 4 p.m. and there were long breaks in between matches. I feel like we had like roughly two hours in between each of our matches. Now maybe that's because they only had one speedball field and most tournaments that I've been to have at least two speedball fields continuously running, but I didn't expect it to last this long, especially being just a three-man tournament. And now let's get into the weird thing that happened. Now before I get into this, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm gonna try and plan my words out very carefully as I explain what went down. And I'm just trying to be factual about what I caught on camera. I am not the type of person who likes drama or beef. And even when it comes to paintball, I'm usually super friendly on the field, but this is something that I feel needs to be talked about. So it was the last matchup of the prelims, Warriors versus the Wreckers. The Wreckers being one of the home teams for Palmetto Hills paintball. And I think they might've even been the hosts of the league. And now the points in this bracket were super tight. The winner of this match would go on past the prelims into the quarterfinals. Now if you look on screen, you're going to see the second to last point between the Warriors and the Wreckers. One of the Warriors players bunkers the last remaining Wreckers player, and that player gets a major penalty on him for spinning after he was shot. Now according to the rules, a major penalty means that the player is out along with two other players that have to get pulled out. But in the event that there are no other players to pull, that means that when the next point starts, the team has to start with that many less players. But they didn't. They actually walked onto the field with all three players, and you can even hear the Warriors coach yelling, why did they have three on the box? They got three on the box! Now in the end, the Warriors still won that point and eventually won that match, moving them out of the prelims. But the thing that made this so weird was that this was the only point throughout the day where this actually happened. That a team that was supposed to start with one or two bodies short actually walked on with all three bodies. I'll even show an earlier point where you can see that the Warriors had to start a body down on one of their points. So throughout the day, the refs had been really good about enforcing this rule. That if a penalty is called and there's not enough bodies to pull, then the next point the team has to start short with that many bodies. Now I always like to give people the benefit of the doubt, so I figured maybe the refs just made a bad call or maybe they weren't keeping track of how many bodies should have walked on. A mistake could have happened. However, 
after the point was done and off camera, unfortunately, the warriors tried to argue with the officials about what had happened. And the weird part is where one of the head officials came out and said that this wasn't one of their rules, but it's clearly on camera that they were enforcing this rule all day. But he was trying to say that it wasn't a rule that the team has to start short a body the next point. So then one of the Warriors staff members actually broke out the NXL handbook and even compared it to the C3XL rulebook. In the end, the officials ended up apologizing to the Warriors, but I'm not gonna lie that it does look really fishy that in a game deciding point where one of the home teams was facing getting sent home early, the refs and the officials suddenly forgot to enforce a crucial rule, one that had been enforced all day prior to that moment. Now I am still gonna actually give them the benefit of the doubt. The Warriors and the Wreckers do tend to butt heads every now and then. Maybe this was something more personal, and this wouldn't have happened if it was the Wreckers versus another team. But either way, this is something to keep an eye out for in future events. And that wraps up pretty much everything that I have to say about the C3XL. If you guys were there, let me know, leave a comment, tell me about how your experience was, and feel free to weigh in on what you think about that weird moment that I mentioned.